Recently, I actually appeared for a couple of interviews and one of those was LinkedIn as well. There is going to be one eliminatory round, two data structures and algorithmic system design, product thinking. The second question was a lead called hard, interestingly, and the problem was a club of a lot of things. It was a club of doubly linked list to a bit of hashing, a lot of things were there. Actually, the behavioral round started and this time things didn't go as expected. So in behavioral round, the problem, the questions that were asked were very straightforward and uh, it was a no hire call, kind of like a disconnect uh, between me and the hiring manager. And from there, um, I believe the overall answers he was not finding satisfactory on mine. So my learning from this round were immense and uh, definitely this was an interesting thing that I was able to clear the uh, LinkedIn SD one round, but this time it was for a senior software engineer role. So recently I actually appeared for a couple of interviews for different companies and one of those was LinkedIn as well. So if you have been following this channel, you might be already aware about the fact that I previously worked with LinkedIn once as an SD one already, right? So right out of college, LinkedIn was the first company that I actually worked with. And interestingly, I again interviewed for LinkedIn this time. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about what was the interview process like at LinkedIn, um, how many rounds were there, what was the difficulty of each round, so on and so forth. At the very last, I'll also talk about the fact that what was the final verdict and how exactly the whole interview process was for me. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing to the channel because we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead. Before moving forward, I would like to tell you about our brand new offering at AlgoCamp around the advanced Spring Boot backend development cohort. So we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the Spring Boot cohort and here we are. This one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me, if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of Spring Boot, in the backend ecosystem, or maybe you already know some things about backend development, maybe in Spring Boot or maybe in some other tech stack, this is going to be a one-stop solution for you. We are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in Spring Boot. We are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in Spring Boot. We are going to take a microservice-driven architecture and build different, different projects, including an Uber app, including Airbnb app, payment wallet like Paytm wallet app and many more. We are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion. We are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like CQRS pattern, Saga pattern for distributed transaction, how you can implement Saga pattern through orchestration and choreography, how Saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two-phase commit, how you can implement each one of them, what is the outbox pattern, how exactly event sourcing is going to work, how you can integrate Kafka for your event sourcing and whatnot. We are going to see so many many interesting database concepts like how exactly no SQLs are internally implemented using LSM trees, what are write ahead logs, how you can replicate your databases, how you can shard your databases, how you can design a good database schema and whatnot. All the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here. What I can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in Spring Boot. This is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride. So what are you waiting for do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end-to-end -end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the spring boot cohort you can actually use the coupon spring 2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and i'm really excited to see you guys in the cohort right do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video so let's just start so LinkedIn's interview process was uh, kind of like mostly known to me, but I had uh, one of my calls with the HR. So I directly applied to LinkedIn without any referral this time. And I got a call back interestingly within a day only. And uh, I was actually briefly explained that what the position is like and what the interview process is gonna be like. So the position that they actually called me back for was for software engineer in full stack kind of like a role, right? And they explained me that the interview process is gonna be the fact that there's going to be one eliminatory round. Once the eliminatory round I will clear, then there's going to be a full interview loop. In the full interview loop, there is going to be two data structures and algorithmic, um, I would say, rounds. One round is going to be around system design. One is going to be around product thinking and product discussion. And one is going to be around UI coding. And at last, there is going to be one uh, engineering manager uh, round, right? So these were the set of rounds. The final one, the engineering manager round, was will be mostly like a behavioral round. 
So these were the set of rounds that were actually explained to me and I was specifically mentioned that the eliminate round is important because if I don't uh, do good in that, the full interview loop is not going to start. As a like feedback, LinkedIn has one of the longest interview processes altogether if I compare with other companies. But overall, I believe, uh, I felt like that it's going to be a good opportunity to actually interview and if I'm able to again work with LinkedIn, it was one of the finest companies that I worked with. So I was pretty much excited for the opportunity and I started with the eliminated round and uh, in the next set of parts, we'll talk about what were the rounds like. So the eliminatory round was a typical data structures and algorithmic round. It was a one hour round in which I was asked two data structures and algorithmic questions. If you see difficulty wise, one question was easy, pure lead code easy. One question was lead code medium. Like if you will go to lead code, it will be marked as medium. I will mark it as easy medium. The first question was a direct lead code question. The second question was not a direct lead code question. Instead, it was just kind of like a reverse of uh, what the exact question is, right? So it was slight modification on that question, but I will still classify that as easy medium. The first question was easily solvable by stack. The second question was easily solvable by recursion. And if you can also do it by stack, if you do iteratively, right? So this was a pretty, I would say, decent and easy round. I will rate the overall round as easy. And I was pretty much confident that I'll get a good positive feedback in this particular round. And after I gave the round, within like 24 hours, I got a call back from the HR that uh, this round went fantastic and we can start the full interview loop. For the interview loop, uh, they actually asked me that uh, do I want some time for preparation, but I was already in touch with the topics and I was already preparing for the other interviews that I had scheduled. So I asked them that whenever they have the first slot available, we can directly start the full interview loop according to that. And that's when the full loop started. So the first round of the full interview loop was a data structures and algorithmic round. Again, it was a one hour round in which I was asked two DSA questions. I would say the difficulty of both the questions were around medium. And the first question was around graph algorithms and uh, DFS. The second question was around matrices and bit manipulation. So I would say that the first question was like sort of easy medium. The second question was a lead code medium level medium question and I was expected to code both of the solution end to end. I was expected to actually put the solution in a situation where they are in a uh, close to running state and also give some um, I would say dry running example so that we can verify whether the code is going to work or not. I would say the round went very well. I was able to communicate both of the solutions properly and the interviewer also looked pretty much uh, satisfied. There was one instance where the interviewer also gave me a direction to directly think of because I was kind of like confused between two approaches but the second one kind of like was easier to code as well so they kind of like tilted towards that and I was able to catch that hint and I was able to code both of the solutions altogether. I would say the overall difficulty of this round was close to medium. Why? Because again in a one hour uh, round coding two end-to-end -end solutions in which one of them is purely a lead code medium one is easy medium but the easy medium one was with graph so graph solutions are generally lengthy I would still rate the overall round as medium and post the interview I actually asked the HR that what's the feedback and they got the feedback pretty early that the feedback was extremely positive because again I was able to code both the solutions all together now an interesting thing was happening in this complete interview loop was the fact that like my recruiter initially told me that I have to complete the full loop within one week so whatever slots I'm gonna give I can take one interview each day for the next six days i can keep multiple interviews on the same day so i was overall comfortable that we can keep multiple interviews for the same day but interestingly uh, again what was happening was a lot of rescheduling was happening from uh, the interviewers end. that means linkedin's end because again they might be having some conflicting schedule or they might get something more important so there was a lot of rescheduling happening so on the same day i was expected to do give one more ds around but interestingly that ds around didn't happen that day and eventually that happened on a separate day so initially i was expected to complete the full loop in one week but eventually the full loop went on for like three odd weeks altogether because there was so many rescheduling that was actually happening so that kind of like disrupted the overall preparation and the mindset because i had a lot of things in between as well but overall this was one round only in one day and i got a good feedback in this particular round so now round two was again another data success and algorithmic round. You can see already this was the third DSA round in the LinkedIn full interview loop, including the eliminated round. This round was slightly a bit more harder because I was asked two questions. I was expected to code both of them end to end. First question was a pure lead code medium. The question was from binary trees. The second question was a lead code hard, interestingly, and the problem was 
a club of a lot of things it was a club of doubly linked list to a bit of hashing a lot of things were there and it was a lead code hut so i would say that the first question i was able to solve slightly a bit more faster and that gave me a good time to actually think about the second question considering that it was a hard question so it was a good call to solve the first question faster so that i can get more time i was able to code the second question also properly and um, i was able to uh, like correlate a lot of different different problems that i have earlier solved in this question and i i didn't solve this question earlier to be very honest this was first time coming to me it's not like a very new lead code question but i i didn't solve it at, as of now so it was kind of like new to me only so i had to think from the very scratch and think about each and every aspect of the um, i would say approach but overall i believe that i did good in the round and a similar feedback actually came later as well resonating the fact that i did well i was able to code both the solutions i was able to get the right hints at the right time and the complexity analysis the constraint discussion and the overall quality of the code i produced was also nice in this particular round they also expected to have good high quality uh, code but again it, it was a ds around only so majority of the focus was on problem solving and i was able to kind of like nail it as well now after the two ds around what i uh, actually felt like was that the full loop is kind of like a bit long and i had an inclination that this time i do not want to work a lot like full stack with linkedin because earlier when i was working with linkedin i was majorly full stack so i wanted to explore more um, back end heavy kind of like a role at linkedin so i actually asked my hr that can we switch the full interview loop from the full stack to a more back end heavy role why like so why i did that because the two ds rounds were common in both the tracks so i thought that it's not going to be much of a loss for anybody and if there is an opportunity to explore a more back end heavy role i'm i was actually open to that so um this kind of like took 3 to 4 more days in between and stopped the full loop in between but um after some time after some consideration the hr came back to me and he said that okay they are okay to actually change the full loop and hence now the interviewers were not going to have any ui aspect round instead of that this is going to be a project discussion round where i'm going to discuss about any project that i have uh, earlier worked with so because of this the loop changed now there is going to be a system design round a project round and a managerial round altogether now the project round was pretty much fantastic i would say in my opinion because i was able to explain one of the past projects that i did uh, there were a lot of challenges that came into that project i was able to explain all the technical plus non technical challenges all the interesting scaling strategies all the interesting uh, uh things that we were able to implement in that project i was able to explain the main agenda of this round is to understand that as a software engineer what scale of projects you have delivered what scale of projects you are able to deliver like in the future you will be able to deliver are you able to understand the scoping of the project well the timeline of the project well and the engineering problems that can come in different different type of projects it's kind of like an open stage for you you can decide which project you want to explain that project can be an internship project a full time engineering project your personal project some open source project that that you have worked with and so on interestingly the same round actually happened with me uh, during my sd1 interviews as well so at that point of time i gave a different description this time it was a different project altogether so the complete round actually ended 10 minutes earlier it was a one hour round but we were able to wrap most of the things within 15 minutes and that was kind of like a good signal for me that uh, i was able to explain things well on time and was able to answer all of the counter question as well now i didn't get the feedback for this round immediately because uh, my recruiter was on leave so i had my next round scheduled the very next day and let's start talking about that now the system design round uh, at linkedin i was already kind of like aware that what kind of questions can actually come up i already explored a lot of lead code discuss articles and i was able to kind of like shortlist the top 3 most frequently asked questions at linkedin and interestingly one of those questions was only asked to me this question is very famous it's the k heavy hitter problem but in what product you have to implement the k heavy hitter that can be different but overall the major engineering concepts of the problem is very much similar interestingly a similar problem was asked to me in sd1 rounds as well at of course at that point of time the design description was expected not not expected very good but this time a detailed design was actually expected out of me and i like this was the best round that i had in the complete interview loop of linkedin i had some really good counter questions from the interviewer and i was able to answer most of them the interviewer also got impressed by a few interesting suggestions that i had and um, what i able to understand is that i was able to propose a very clean and a actual working solution like 
if you see in real world you don't go with very complex solution and instead you go with straightforward and implementable solutions so this feedback i got that this is this design is very close to a actual design that somebody will implement probably in the v0 v1 or v2 of a product so that was kind of like a good uh, i would say feedback and eventually on the same day i got the feedback for both the rounds the system design and the project round that both are positive and the overall interview loop was looking very great as well then uh, actually the behavioral round started and this time things didn't go as expected so in behavioral round the questions that were asked were very straightforward and uh, my interviewer also told me that keep a story ready around the basic behavioral questions that what you are going to answer interestingly apart from the basic questions i was also asked a question that why i wanted to change the interview loop in between like from the different track to a different track i answered uh, based on uh, my knowledge and my understanding but i believe that uh, brought a kind of like a disconnect uh, between me and the hiring manager and from there um, i believe the overall answers he was not finding satisfactory on my end so overall uh, at least at that point of time i felt like the behavioral round i am also kind of like going, doing very good but after the behavioral round i got an interesting feedback that the hiring manager was not happy with my answer specifically around the fact that why i changed my interview loop from one position to another because uh, the interview loop that i started with was expected to be with this hiring manager but now because i have changed things is going to change altogether but then i also argued with the hr that you only approved it so i believe you should not have a problem with that but uh, this didn't go very well in the right direction although um, after all of the interview loop uh, they said that okay they are going to take my package to the hiring committee it's not like a no hire for them uh, because all of the tech rounds were superb so they will still take my packet to the hiring committee and then the hiring committee is going to decide that what should be done with my candidature so then after like i believe a week so linkedin has hiring committee interview like uh, reviews twice a week so after the when the next hiring committee review actually happened uh, it was a no hire call uh, from them because of the not so satisfactory response from the behavioral round specifically uh, i got a detailed feedback on the tech rounds they were mostly fantastic but because of the confusion that i had uh, that i was not very much clear around what i expected out of linkedin this time and uh, the answers around that looked slightly a bit casual to the hiring manager i was given a no hire call but overall um, i felt like the complete interview loop was grilling enough because if you see the system design round it was a k heavy hitter question the lead code one of the uh, dsa round had lead code hard as well so this complete loop was kind of like very um, uh, good it taught me a lot of things and i also learned a lot of things around the behavioral round aspect to be very honest till now i have been taking behavioral round not so seriously but then i realized that this round is one of the most impactful round that can actually go which can make or break break your actual packet so overall my learning from this rounds were immense and uh, definitely this was an interesting thing that i was able to clear the uh, linkedin sd one round but this time it was for a senior software engineer role so this time i was uh, i was getting a no hire call but definitely i'll make sure that maybe next time when i get an opportunity i am able to nail that but overall i believe you got a fair idea that what is the interview loop for linkedin for a senior software engineer role looking like do let me know in the comment section if you have any questions all together i'll make a separate video around the design aspect of the uh, question what was the design question how i actually approached it so if you want that video soon do let me know in the comment section and if you have any other question do drop them as well that being said let's wrap this particular video here we're going to meet soon in the next set of videos till then take care bye bye i'm sanket singh signing off